Um, but I know I just sat down. I put it on to watch the show. Do How we, you doing now, Vin? We have anything? We've been on for a half hour, and not one person has said nothing to us. I just sat down. I would have told you a half hour ago, but I just sat down because I just got back. I said, let me see what my buddies are doing on the air there. And I said, is it my computer? Wow. The whole time we've been on the air. And, and not, not one person has heard us. Wow, this sucks. Well. We know I you appreciate do, it. We know you do. I appreciate that, Vin. What did you miss? Let's see. Um, Annie putting on her glasses. Oh, she's an asshole. No. Um, <laughs> Obama. Watched, hold on. I watched a show last night about a lady. She was like a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. And she got accused of pounds? killing a, th- uh, a two-year-old baby. That they sat there and said that she fell on him. Uh. And technically, she was protecting her sister. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. She was protecting her sister, who actually beat the kid in the head. This world is getting sicker and sicker. Yep. So, they finally, they took her into a hospital. She lost, like, six, about 600 pounds uh, in now, the interim. She's dating Donald Trump in the interim now. Uh, and then we were just sitting there talking... About this guy has a lawsuit against now uh, New York Police Department for arresting him for having four blue rocks and two red rocks in his pocket. Okay. Do you know what it was? What? Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> they mistook Jolly Ranchers for meth rocks. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, we know who's on meth, right? Yeah, it's definitely well, not. The, it definitely wasn't that kid with the candy in his pocket. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen a Jolly Rancher in a long time. I love Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, well, that's because all the meth dealers have them now. Yeah. They're making money. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah. This is, you know, I guess there's not too many people out there listening to us no more. That's sad. Well, well call- maybe they just didn't want to call and let you know. Yeah. Maybe they were reading your lips. Maybe we got a deaf continuance That's like really now. sad. That no, we sat on here for a half hour. But hold on. I mean, and, and maybe it wasn't, I don't know, because I came home, I put it on, I hear nothing. I don't know, maybe you were on. Nah, it couldn't be, right? You couldn't have been on. No, there's nah, no we way. Were out. No, we were out. Yeah. No, no way. No, yeah. No way. Um, now that I'm, I'm really depressed because... We had some good stuff going there. Then that means that there's not really too many people out there listening to us no more. Well, you know what it is? It could be that they they didn't hear you. They didn't bother calling. See me? I call. You know, listen. You're not on. Yeah. That that really bugs me, though. That's sad. It really bugs me. Hold on one second, Vin. I'm going to go to commercial. All right. Hold on. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Jesus is a fire. Jesus, Jesus. 
Mister. I'm flattered that you love chocolate, but I'm here strictly in a professional. What's wrong with him? He thinks you're naked. My shell is brown. It just looks like my milk chocolate is showing. Only a fool would think I'd actually show up naked. So it's that kind of party. Hit it! I'm sexy and I know it. Hey. Okay. So Vin, I I know last weekend. Uh, you How did your thing go? Do your show, uh, due to the fact that we were at the We Will Survive um, concert. So when are you coming back? I'll be back this Saturday with a fantastic singer. You guys might have heard of him. I'm not sure his name is Peter Mio M I O, and he's just awesome. He just he he comes with his keyboard and he plugs in, and he's uh, just a really good singer. And he, and he does all different genres. He goes from Italian to Spanish to to just about, you know, to Frank Sinatra, to uh, uh, Jay Black and the Americans, to the Prees. He's great. You guys, will, if you're coming down this Saturday, you'll enjoy it. We'll definitely come oh, down. Oh, definitely. I like, I like good Italian and what, music. And what time is your show this weekend? 12.30. 12.30? Nice. Very nice. Yeah, 12.30. Yep. Taking Frankie's spot. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I want to hear some nice Italian music. Well, yeah, like, you know, he's going to do about five songs. He'll do one Italian, one Spanish, one Dupree, one Frankie. He, he's got a... He's got a montage. Yeah, it's amazing because when he sings Spanish, he sounds Spanish. And when he sings Italian, he sounds Italian. And when he sings the Duprees, he sounds Duprees. Is there a Dupree language? I don't know. Never heard of oh, that before. I heard of Duprees. Yeah, sounds just like him. No, he's good. Very nice. He's very, very nice. good. So, you know, and then November 23rd, I got a professional wrestler coming to the show. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Which one? You ever hear of Hulk Hogan? Yeah, you ain't got Terry Bollet. No, I don't. But I, 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 I don't. Just ask if you ever heard of him. I got a guy. <laughs> you ain't got Terry <laughs> Bollet. How do you know? What do you got? His cousin, <laughs> Philly, <laughs> Philly Bollet? Oh, God. <laughs> Vinny, that, you I made me look. I got cousin on his sister's side. You made me laugh with. You know, you know. With that one. You know what, Vinny? Oh, God. That's the 23rd. Wait, now what do you got coming? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on with this wrestler. I, being I have the same haircut as Hulk Hogan. You're not going to be here. I'm going to dye my hair blonde like Hulk Hogan. I'm going to buy a couple of these lady stretchies and boas. And when you're interviewing this guy, I'm going to come running in he playing be the Hulk Hogan theme music. That would be awesome. <laughs> you're not going to be here. You're not going to be here. I'll make it a point to be, oh, man. It's so the wait a minute. Vacation. That's okay. We'll call Vinny. We'll call him. Yeah. I'll Skype it to so you. So who, <laughs> who are you going to have here, Vin? He, he, he wrestles not with the WWE. His name is Alvin Horn. You could Google him. And uh, he, he wrestles with uh, Mikey Whiprack and a couple of people that used to be in ECW. Very cool. Wrestling. Very nice. My son used to be a wrestler. Wow. Yeah. He wrestled with Billy, Billy Kidman. Yeah, Billy Kidman, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. He yeah. was very good friends with Billy and Kidman. And then uh, his girlfriend got pregnant. Right. He dropped out. He joined the army. She had the kid. She left him when he was overseas. Yep. And wow. Kidman, Perfect life. Kidman wanted to kill him because Perfect he uh, Kidman had uh, tutored him and uh, trained him and put a lot of time and effort. And the kid was yeah. m literally, Benny, he literally went, he went by the name moments Twisted. away from signing a great contract. With Kidman's help, and his kid today could have been worth millions, and he could have been famous, and and then he's got he the best away. life of all. He became psycho when he came back from overseas. Right. So now he's mentally post, unstable. Uh, what a life the government dramatic. gives you, you know? The government gives you such a wonderful life. You're not kidding. I was so pissed when uh, when he was he was doing so good with it, and he was on the verge of the break. Doing yeah. a break. literally, he can reach out and touch the doorknob. All he had to do was turn the friggin' doorknob, and his life would have been so much different. Right. But his girlfriend came up with, "Oh, I'm pregnant," so he decided he needed stability. Signing a contract with with ECW would would have definitely given him stability. Oh yeah, Billy Kidman was a big star. Oh, he was so good. He had, uh, yeah. So tell me, how's my uh, my buddies over there doing? How are they doing with school? That's it. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> Five days a week, the, the heads are in the books. Gina's doing excellent. She's gotten nothing lower than a 96 on her test.
Tess. Fantastic. Oh, bless her. That, yeah, she's doing great. Sophia's getting okay. there with the kindergarten. She's starting to spell all kinds of, you know, orange and red and green, which I find amazing at five years old. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I came home in a 96 one time. My father slapped me because I forgot to erase the guy's name off the paper. Yeah, but I, I gave it a shot, you know. <laughs> yeah. I used to buy the, I used to buy uh, test papers. I had to. I, I didn't. When I was in school, forget it. They were still using rocks and, uh, and chisels. But think about it, though. When we were in school, we had to survive. I mean, uh, you know, we, our parents had no money. No. So we had to go make a few dollars here and there. I used to cut out a class and I used to make pizza boxes on the corner for the guy. He used to be, Vigi, and, uh, you better go back to the school because I don't want to come over here giving me a problem. <laughs> I, said, I said, Carmine, listen, there is no problem. Just give me my dollar and I'll be on my way. <laughs> so I spent an hour making boxes for a buck. Wow. It worked, right? I used to go rob rewards. I used to go down on uh, Grand Avenue, and they had a five and dime store. And we, me and my buddies used to go over there and mug that place and then take it to the fat lady and fence it. <laughs> it was a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back then, it was easy, wasn't it? it you know what? It was, to me, it seemed like the guys, the, the owners knew you were taking a few things here and there. They didn't care. Yeah. No, because it was good for their insurance. They put it in yeah. loss prevention, yeah, no and they time. got retired. They, you, they knew you had to survive, too. I mean, my brother dropped out of school when he was 15. You and know, my friend used to say, Bill on the corner, Bill, Bill's grocery store, little grocery store. And we used to say, Bill, can we have a soda? And Bill had it when he, because it was a back of him, the soda, back of the counter. So when he turned around to get the soda, we would put as many candy bars as we can in our, in our pocket. <laughs> and then Bill would say, here you go. And he would say, whatever. And we would say, oh, we don't have enough. And he would be like, oh, you know, you don't have enough, no good. So this went on for a while. Then one day we said to Bill, yeah, we'll take a Coke. So Bill turns around, and he did a real quick bat. I caught you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew, you know, what we were doing. I mean, we yeah. thought everybody was stupid, you know? Yeah. I mean? Yeah, I remember over there uh, by 69th Street, they used to, over there in Flushing, they used to have Macy's. Mm. And Macy's, this is true, when I was a kid, they used to put gold necklaces right. I remember you out on display. That. Yeah. Oh, boy. Ming. That wasn't smart. I was 11 years old, and I had gold bracelets out the wang. <laughs> 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 what did I know the value of gold? So I would sell them for 4 or $5 each. <laughs> Me thought they were worth hundreds. <laughs> and then Macy got wise and, uh, you know, started putting them in the display case. <laughs> well, I think all the stores used to hang them like they do all the cheap jewelry. Yeah, they used to, like, they used they, to hang they, all the real stuff they, like they, that. And then they got wise because all of a sudden we became wise guys and realized we got free money laying there. You know, it's so funny you mentioned gold. I was clear out my garage the other day, and I found in one of the drawers, because I threw all the drawers, I thought I don't need this, because I made like a man cave in my garage. Okay. I, I know, I, I saw pictures. Inside the baggie was like three links of gold. I remember the guy cut my chain to make it a little tighter, and he said, well, here's the extra link. So I'm like, what am I gonna do with those? He's like, well, you know, it's gold. I'm like, yeah, but it's a little thing of gold, could it be worth? Yeah. He's like, well, take it. I took a two in the drawer in the garage and forgot about it. The other day, I go to the place right around the corner, I told on the guy, how much would this be? They said, I give you $150 for it. $150? Nice. These hey. three little links? Yep. Yep. I could not believe it. Well, Vin, th is it the links from your bracelet or from your necklace? My bracelet. No shit. Have, has, nobody's ever seen your bracelet. I have. No one that was $150 no. fucking dollars. <laughs> it was three little links. I mean, it's three links, but I couldn't believe it. I said, what the heck is gold? I had gold's like 13. Excuse me. Do, you, do you ever, yeah, 16. Do you ever see Mr. Vinny's bracelet? No, I don't look at Vinny's Links. The first day I met him, when he when he shook his hand, he stuck his hand out. He's got this, his his bracelet's like this wide. Is is Vinny and diamonds? You know, that's a funny story with that that bracelet. All right. Well, I want to hear the story. This, this is the story with that. My it's it's really sweet in, though. In the '90s, in the '90s, bought my bought a, gave me a rope chain with my name Vinny on it. Okay. And I, and I Back down in the '90s, that's what you wore, like. Right. So yeah. I said to her, "Listen, when we broke up, I said I can't accept this." Because what am I gonna do? It's getting your name on it. I said, let me pay for it. And I forget it was three hundred and fifty dollars for the whole thing. <laughs> so I Back then, hey. So then I met my wife. When we got married, she's like, "What is this? This 
rope chain. That's out in the 80s, 90s. I said, I know. So the guy took the, the rope chain. He gave me, he gave me, he, we switched. In other words, he took the money for the rope chain and, uh -huh. put this, and put this chain on. So after about a week later, I go, Linda, look, this thing is too big on me. So he says, all right, we'll go back there. My friend will take off a couple of links. So she used to work for this guy in Tri-County, Tri-County Jeweler. I love the Tri-County, up top. On top, yes. Yeah. And they were called Levitt Jewelers, these people. Okay. Here in Massapequa, Chris and Darry. So anyway, he fixed it. He gave me the three links. But that's the story behind behind the, this bracelet. It's The name Vinny is since the 90s, but the chain... So the Vinny was on the necklace. 2001. Well, that's nice. You, you used to, to do that. You used to wear the big silver. Remember? Paulie don't like gold. I bought him a gold ring one time, nine diamonds. Somebody I stole it. it. Well, I, gold is out. I mean, I, I'm the, all in the old-time guineas like myself, the Guidos back in Howard Beach in Ozone Park. We still wear our gold. If I show you a picture of me when I was 21, I had the Mr. T starter kit. My whole neck was full of gold and charm. I used to wear oh. a lot of silver. I used to wear a lot, a lot of silver. And believe me. Right. And then oh, I, I and what else did I find in the garage? And I got it right here. I, I should have brought this to him too. It's a small little charm. It weighs nothing. It says 100% Italian. <laughs> but the little little ones. Remember, we used to put a bunch of charms yeah. on one chain. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I gotta bring that to him. I'll probably get about 600 for that. I, I <laughs> love I love my I love my my jewelry. I, I wear gold now, but I don't have my jewelry on right now. Because <laughs> when when you see me, I have I put all my jewelry on. I got a ring for every freaking finger. And uh, but I switch, I switch from I wear silver and I wear gold. But back in the day, Paulie, he used to go by the name Outlaw. Right. And uh, I got on his big freaking. He used to wear plate. a big plate. He used to say Outlaw. I was one of the first guys to do that. I had the ones that painted the lady. Remember? I had all my friends. My friends. I had a double thick. Yeah. Plate. Hey, Paulie, were you on the CB years ago? You remind me of somebody that might have hit the CB years ago. Oh my God, back in the 70s. Really? I was on, I, because I was a big, big CB guy. Big. My and brother and I were too. 2000 with a D104 mic with a linear. And you I could were nuts. Uh, you were burning them up. At you were, 1 o'clock in the morning. I, me, I used to hang out with a guy named uh, the Caribou Killer. His name is Harold. Never forget him. God, my my brother beast. used to be on it all the time. And my mom. Uh, who's, um, my mom used to talk to one of her friends. My mom, we came in the house one day. My mom was sitting on the CB talking to our friend. I used to go on the CB and I was talk like, mom, to. What are you doing? I used to talk to Big Joe, the caribou killer. I was called the loco pony because I was. You can never catch me. I was always up was, to something. My brother was Iron Tail. Uh. I was. I was Vinny Bag of Donuts. Wow. No, we used to Why does that name seem to fit you, Vin? Yeah, I don't know. They gave me that name because I would just go by Vinny. Yeah. You know, but there were all these guys on the CB. Then one time I met Justine, and Justine sounded so beautiful on the CB and ah! talk. So Justine said, "Why don't you pass by one day? We'll meet." And I didn't drive. I was only 17 at the time. Uh huh. But my buddy, who I worked on the route, we used to I used to have a, used to a trucking route, and I was his helper. I said, we ever, I forgot the area, wherever the hell it was. Wherever it was, he was like, we're going to be there Wednesday, right by there. He goes, I'll take you by the Cedar Girl. Oh, God. But I told her we're going to be there at this time, and all of a sudden I hear, Vinny, where the hell are you? I said, who the hell is that? And it was Justine. Oh, my God. Yep, 6'2". She had to be... Do you know <laughs> Wow. What's the matter, Vin? She, and she could have... She put her hand out to shake my hand. I thought she was going to crush it. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We, 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 we became friends, you know. <laughs> you had no other choice. She would have bent you over. <laughs> yeah. We, um... Jerry. Jerry the Wanderer. I'll never forget him. Jerry the Wanderer. Jerry the Wanderer. Jerry the Wanderer. Who the hell? And then everybody... So one day I met Jerry, I swear to God, it's a true story. The poor guy was blind in one eye, about 5'4", maybe, and maybe about 130 pounds soaking wet. I said, oh, you're wow. fucking Jerry? Yep. I can't believe it. It's amazing how you can become of, somebody. A lot, a lot of little weird people were on the CB. 
My brother used to go by the name Iron Tail. My 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 cousin was Double Trouble. You know they used to. No, call me, I, I remember. They used to call me Tiny. Oh. Uh, I uh, was back then Tiny. I, I remember one night, Vinny. Okay. My friend Linda was on the CB, and some guy ripped into her, really okay. bad, and she called her brother Harold, <laughs> and had. Uh, we call him Harold out of love because that, that really is his name, but we you never called it to his face. And this guy gets on his CB with his other dude and says, you know what, dude? He says, me and my boy here, meaning me, are going to go, we're going to come looking for you. And the guy goes, well, you know how big I am? He says, I'm sure you're a big guy. He says, meet me at 7-Eleven in Shirley. This is a true story. I'm maybe 160 pounds at the time. I'm a young buck. I'm full of life. We get there. This guy's about 5'10", about 230 pounds. I get out of the car. He starts running his mouth. And I just looked at Harold. And all of a sudden, the guy sees the car go up six inches. Oh, my God. Harold steps out. He is 6'5", 340 pounds of jack muscle. Bitch slaps this guy and implants him into the bricks of 7-Eleven. I was crying. And he was, I thought it was you. No, 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 no. I'm not the caribou killer motherfucker. I said, I'm the pony. I said, you playing with that boy. He, the kid was in a neck brace for three weeks. Harold had him to shake him. You have a dog of mine set up like that again. We were crying. And we knew we weren't going to get arrested because Harold's father was a sheriff so we just bubbled this guy and beat him to dog snot and then we left we never heard him on the radio again never never we were yeah, crying yeah, a lot of fun back then if you think about it because yeah, we really we weren't big people back then but we had big mouths and Harold let me tell you something all the, all the people that we used to that used to talk on the CBs and everything else from Freeport and stuff everybody would get together everybody would be on the and we wind up in Levittown at the roller skating rink. Nice. I want to go roller skating. And next door to it was a place called Jan's. Ice Jan's. cream? Not an ice cream ball. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Next door to it. So we would all go hang out. Meanwhile, I was younger. I was like 16. Right. Everybody was like 20, 21. I mean, she was nine. Like nine. Well, they were, they were older than me. They were Everybody's like, older than you. But so I was in the same boat. I was younger, and I, I was 16, just like Annie, and everybody else was, was, was a couple yeah. years older. Yeah, so, I like, remember. they were all sitting there, and we'd all go in and hang out, and everybody go roller skating, and then they sit there, and we go next door to Jan's, and you get that big, huge thing, the metal bowl of ice cream. Right, yep, the and kitchen sink, remember the kitchen yeah, sink? Yeah, it's the big metal bowl. Yeah. And it was like unbelievable. You get whatever, and and the kids these days don't know what that's like. Nope. You know they know the phones and the the games and everything and else, but never experience the, the the way we grew up. Never. And, and you know what? They don't realize it, but it was it was a lot a lot fun, a lot more fun. Right. I'm saying it right. Not to have a beeper, not to have a cell phone, not to have a Vinny, that. we used to be able to have go out. Navigation, to go drive. Where you got to go? I got to go to 2307 68th Street. Where the heck is that? Take a map out and find it. We used to sit there, Vin, okay, and be able to walk around at fucking 1 o'clock in the morning Absolutely. with your friends and not have to worry about nothing. No, the either. cops didn't mess with you. God forbid you're out at 1 o'clock in the morning now. Right. Okay. Well, the cops didn't mess with you because they knew that you feared them and respected them. Yes. Today, it's not only that, but they also knew that you really weren't doing anything wrong. Right. But at least they knew. Listen, if I say something to this kid, he's going to be a gentleman towards me or, or a lady towards me. She's going to be a lady. You know, it's not going to be today. Forget it. Oh, forget it. You, <laughs> you're nuts. Different story. Yeah, but you got to understand something, too. Come on. Look at what was in the newspaper. Freaking the cop arrested the guy for having four or five... Uh, six pieces of freaking uh, Jolly Ranchers in his pocket. Hey, this is the generation. Whether you're a cop, a fireman, a doctor, a lawyer, this is it. This is. It's not like it was. But you want to know something? Come to my house and, and do something. Vinny. My father would hire him to cement or, or whatever he had to do, fix something. Right. The guy would come in and he wouldn't leave until it was perfect. Yeah. You get somebody today to come in and do something, it's half ass. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Not like it was. No. But that's because this is, it goes from generation to generation to generation. That's it. It was a lot different when we were kids in every aspect that there was. 
I try to bring my kids up, not old school, but not too much of the new tech. You know, I mean, yeah. it's out there. They want to be involved in it. But I let them know, listen, this is what we did. Why don't you try it? Why don't you go outside and get a stick and get a ball and play that way? Try to make your own games up. What? We used to draw on the street. That was our game. Yeah, and remember when you were playing scalesies when you used to live in the city? That's what I mean. Skelly. We, we would get the chalk, draw a skelly board, and play skelly. The we, girls would get box a balls. Ball, draw a hopscotch court and play hopscotch. Uh, we, used to, we used to play uh, stoop ball, box ball, Johnny on the pony. Johnny on the pony. How would you play Johnny on the pony? These kids would have the imagination to have a bunch of guys stand up against a wall and have... What about Ringo Levio? Remember that one? Oh, shit, yeah. Kick the can. Kick the can. And then that one where you... Uh, Ass is up. You remember Asses Up, where you played handball? Asses Up, red light, green light, one, two. Yeah, they don't know how to play these games. They have not a clue. What? what how much did these games cost? Zero. Nothing. Not a dollar. Imagination. No, maybe a dollar for a handball. No, we used to go up on top of the roofs where the, where the guys... No, but you know, when you first started out, you somebody had to start spending money, but... For a dollar, you get like a couple 59 of 59 cents for a small yeah, little pinky you know, ball. They were 59 cents. You get cents. them. You go to 7-Eleven. You cut them in half and stick them on your chin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then chips on the ball. Whoever lost the ball had to come up with the 59 cents. Yeah, that's the way it worked. Yeah. And the whoever got they... caught got beat with the stick from the grandmother. <laughs> friends, we used to come out in the morning. All right, where are we going to go? Let's go up this guy's roof. Let's go. We used to go on the roofs and find the balls that were up there. Yep. Yeah. Me and my, my brother, we used to, my brother was a pitcher. And I used to love to catch. And I had big ass you know, Jerry Grody catches mask and all. Your hand? Yeah, I got hands like a beast. That's why I was always the guy. Because the only guy who could pull the freaking uh, a catcher's mitt. Yeah. So they may always made me the catcher. And me and my brother for hours on end would play running bases, Which baseball. One? My brother Al. My brother passed away with very yeah, at a very young age. Yeah. And uh, I miss playing ball, with my brother. Yeah. You know. Yeah, cool. Well. Yeah, all the guys in the neighborhood, we used to squeak up under the fence, and we would go and we'd play baseball. We used to play war with the next block over. Yeah, we used to, that's what we used to do. you challenge other people from other neighborhoods. You had a good time. There was none of this shit and, now. And, and one block would have a fort, and the other block would have a fort, and you'd have to catch the one the one. People. Capture the flag. You know, you used to have to capture them, and you lock them up in the fort, but then you wind up feeding them and stuff like that. <laughs> You wind up giving them, you know, used to, you know. Prep them for jail. You have to feed them. <laughs> so, like, with us, we'd have the juice and the candy and the this and the that. And stuff. So the kids always used to get caught and come into our fort. That's cool. So, yeah. But yeah, they don't do shit like that no more. All right, we got to get out of here for today. Yeah. What, did we lose many? No, I'm here. Uh, yeah, they don't, kids don't do that. We used to play paddle ball and. Handball, a quarter a game, a half dollar and you a want game. You want to know something stupid? Back then, kid, boys used to play hopscotch with the girls. I played. I had I sisters. Admit, I hate to admit it, but I played. Am I right? I, I jumped rope. Whatever there was to play. If there was no guys out, and the girls were like, "We're playing hopscotch." I'm like, "Give me the my brother." Game. Yep. My brother learned how to double dutch. Uh, I used to hopscotch and shit. I, I had younger sisters. I had to keep him entertained. Hold on a minute. Michael. Michael. Remember when Reed used to do double dutch? Yeah. Michael used to do it with my, her. My son Michael used to do oh, it. I'm a good double dutch jumper. My brother nice. used to do it. Sure. We got to get... Everything. It didn't matter. We got to get a competition going, double Dutch competition. Show yeah. these kids, show these kids how it's all right. there. We, we should challenge them all, all to a game of uh, a stick ball. They, they wouldn't know what what it would be like when they got spunked with that 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 pinky ball, get oh, one yeah. good shot in the head with no glove. That would straighten their asses right. Or play a game of asses up with them and funny. sting them. Your mother used to always yell at you because once the balls are breaking in half, you'd stick them on your. Remember that? You just suck, suck, suck. Stick them suck on your chin. Cups, you stick yeah. them on your forehead, and, and all your kids would walk. You you would walk around with all these red marks, and your mother would be like, "What the hell's wrong with you?" And then you feel, oh, oh, she would see the ball on you and slap you in the back of the head. <laughs> Take that <laughs> shit off. I remember when in, when the elm trees in in Queens when they used to fall. And they used to call the, they used to take the little, oh, split them up nose. and stick them on your nose. And you'd go around and you'd walk in the house and it looked like you had like 40 goddamn grasshoppers on your face. Yeah. You, used, you used to be able to whistle with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember taking a blade of grass and learning how to whistle with that and acorn. Oh, wait, hold on. I, Vinny, I knew how to do all before that. Before we leave, pops. I got I to tell you a story. Yeah. No one plays a good game of tops. About a blade of grass. 
When I first met Paulie, we were together for maybe a month. And uh, Paulie had to go to his niece's wedding. Well, Paulie was going with his ex-wife to the niece's wedding. And Paulie didn't come home for about two days. At Poison Ivory. Then he came home, and he had Poison Ivory, like, all over his face and his mouth. I'm like, yeah. So that's what you get, you mother effer. Poison Ivory. Poison Ivory. Yeah, Poison Ivory on my face because... Well, he decided he was going to hang out with his ex. Not, not even hang out with him. My nieces... Hold on, hold on. And he was chewing on blades of grass. I was As a kid, I always used to chew on grass. He was chewing on blades of Poison Ivy. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I, I used to take... So I told him that's what you get for leaving for two days and hanging out with the freaking... Uh, my niece... Yeah. My niece, Stacy said to me... Gave me a blade of grass, and I said, watch this. And I started to whistle it, unbeknownst to me. <laughs> I had poison ivy on my lips and my lungs and my eyes. Oh, I got it bad. I almost croaked from it. But you know what? I showed my niece that you didn't need nothing more than a little bit of imagination and a little bit of nothing to make something happen. And that's all we ever had as kids. We, you know, we, we, we wished and hoped for the best. We knew we were poor. We, we just never said it. Yeah. Everybody else was poor. We were never poor. We were ingenious. Right. And you know, I remember wearing my sneakers and I had holes in the bottom that the that they used to flop. My little five dollar. Yeah, he walks around hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar sneakers. I and I, and you know what? I wear them until they flop, until they break. I still do that. I wear a pair of jeans. I, a, I got a pair of jeans on now, Vinny. I got these things 12 years. No, you don't. Oh, I do. So these things, these, th no, these things are trash. No, they're not 12 years oh, old. Are these the ones? Yeah, yeah look. I wish I could show you. I got a big two-inch square where it's nothing but left to right threads. I have no north and south threads. So the you've been the same weight for the last 12 years? No, his pants. No, nah, I stretch them out. I shrink them. <coughs> I beat them. <coughs> <coughs> but you got it. The bottoms He's are all. He's had them for like maybe two years. Bullshit. He won't let me get rid of them. Bullshit. They're just after all these years. They're just starting to get comfortable. Well, you're gonna get comfortable because we gotta say goodbye for today. Uh, the kids today don't know that. You buy a twenty dollar pair of jeans. I was happy with a pair of Levi's student jeans. Levi's, showing I my love. Shit but off. you know what? It's hard to find them. Yeah. It's like everything else. They fucking destroyed it. Look at this. This is a jelly roll. Urgh. Yes, yeah. Lee Steady Riders. Now I wear Wranglers. I wear Wrangler, look, relax fit, because I'm now a fat bastard. No, I don't have relax <laughs> fit. You know, I have no ass, so when I put it on, it looks like I'm flat in the back, like 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 a wall. He's brain dead. Don't mind him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good look. It's hard to get a girl to whistle at you when you got a trucker's ass and says flat. <laughs> you know. Well, what were you for many years, a trucker? Uh, Twenty-three years, I was a trailer driver. So I know, oh, mate. Yeah, I've had it, my God, forever. I won't give it up either. Now how sick I get, I won't give it up. No, I'll never give that up. I. Uh, never know. I love riding. Believe me, believe me. I worked for Gershaw's for for a while. I worked for a lot of trucking companies. And uh, sometimes I dearly miss it, but I know I don't uh, physically. I uh, I can't endure the 14, 16 hour rides no more. I can't, and yeah. it's a shame because I really would love to have another tractor. It doesn't even like do uh, dry state area shit, but they make it so hard with you know so many permits. You need all permits. You need. Over the road permits, you need local permits, you need up permits, down permits. It, it's such a ball of shit. And then you can't even go register your truck in New York because they charge you four times more. That's why you see all the play, the Jersey companies, trucking companies located in Jersey. They're based in Jersey, but they work out in New York because Jersey, it works with them to keep, their, to, to keep everybody in money. Where New York wants to suck you dry for every penny you got. You know, and the insurance, forget it, it's ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a year. Go buy a tow truck, 80000 for a tow truck, $22,000 a year because you have to have a minimum of a million-dollar liability. Right. Ain't no car in the world worth a million dollars. Nope. You know? Right. Yeah, brother. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go give B-Jam a call and uh, 
see if I can get through this guy again because I I'm, now now he's got me interested. Now he's got me baited. Yeah, let, let me let me know what goes on with that. Oh, definitely, definitely. The number one rule is there are no rules. <laughs> Have a good night. Have a good day. Bring it home. 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 B